Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mental Roots. We're in season two and this is episode three. So uh, yeah, this is me, Nathan Aday, animator, podcaster, Christian, um, passionate about all things creative and using creative platforms and content creation platforms to better people, you know, to inspire people, to morally uplift people. That's my mission. That's what I'm all about. And Mental Roots, um, this is a podcast by me, a black British male, for black British males mainly, but more widely it's for the black community in terms of really talking about mental health. I am not an expert in mental health, I am not a practitioner, I am just a creative who has had his own experiences and just wants to speak with other people who have their own mental health experiences that they would like to share and discussing resources and ways that we can better um, deal with and remedy our mental health struggles as black people. Uh, And this is part three um, of my chat with a black um, American female um, who's Muslim. Her name is Taja Billingsley, just a few years younger than me, so probably about 21. Um, And yeah, if you haven't heard part one and part two, go and listen to those ASAP uh, to get the full context of what she talks about regarding her mental health experience. And in part two, the previous episode, we talk about um, her relationship um, that she had with a, a, a black boy and just looking at a broader commentary on like what that her experience says about the dynamics between um, black men and black women. Um, but in this part of our conversation, this final part of our conversation, um, Taja breaks down what it's like to be in a HBCU, a historically black college slash university. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't have that in the UK, at least to my knowledge. Um, so hearing her experience, being in such an educational institution where black empowerment and cultural uh, education, you know, education on black history, a w- m- much more well-rounded education on black history um, is encouraged. It's great to hear her experience but on that. But we mainly talk about how even in that institution um, that she's part of, which you're going to hear her talk about, um, she talks about having access to therapy there, you know, like that's amazing you know this is something we need in our um communities as black people you know um number one having these safe spaces for young people to have education that is um much more you know um in line with their history and um their culture and their identity but also creating safe spaces where we normalize in the black community Um, talking about our vulnerabilities, our insecurities and having healthy dialogue and conversation. And so she talks about her experience of having access to culturally competent therapy in her HBCU and basically what she's learned from that, what she's learned about herself, what she's learned about the value of therapy. Um, And hopefully it will inspire you guys listening as well. Most of you whom whom I trust are mostly minority ethnic like hopefully there's something we can learn from this conversation in regards to how we can go about finding therapy and knowing what type of stuff is therapeutic for us in the first place in terms of helping us heal um, from the 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 various kinds of trauma that comes with being um, a, a black person in a white majority setting so let's get into it the final part of my chat with Taja Billingsley and I hope you enjoy We're one hour deep already it's been a good hour mm-hmm. um so back to the idea of mental health so do you kind of remember when you started hearing about mental health as a concept, as an idea, um, and yeah, like as you were growing up, maybe you know at this point you're at the, um, I keep forgetting the letters, the HBCU, 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 uh, yeah, at H, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. sorry. I know y'all so, say Z over there. <laughs> no, the, <laughs> yeah, we say Z instead of Z, so. <laughs> 
I didn't yeah. say Z. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so what's what's the journey in terms of when you started to be, I guess, a bit more self-aware of what you were going through and maybe like when when did you start being more aware of mental health your, or your mental health specifically? My mental health? Uh, we didn't address we didn't address that in my family for a long time. Um, mm. It was more so just get over it and keep it moving. Yep. Um, yep. That, that's just a classic thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people, to be fair, a lot of people in society do struggle with mental health. So I don't think the stigma on mental health is just within the black community, you know. Mm -hmm. But I would say it is heavier in the black community. Um, yeah. And obviously in this podcast, we've talked about the various aspects, like the pressure from outside and you know if we do have a mental struggle do we feel that the system of the country that we're living in will actually help us to heal or will they just use that against us uh, right and right. then even within the black community there's different cultural beliefs and perceptions on mental health and lack mm -hmm. of education on the term that makes us think oh if you have a mental health issue that means you're, you've gone crazy or you know you need you just need prayer or whatever so or just get away from you leave them alone yeah 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 definitely yeah, that's the worst that's the worst way to handle somebody who's not mentally mm. well um by disregarding them or telling them their issues are not that big of a deal and that they should get over it yeah, um yeah. that might only just send them over the edge honestly um yeah so me and my older sister get compared a lot because she's been through a lot of stuff um you know she was going through college you know especially um you know having two kids and everything like that and you know my mom's like well how is it that your sister can go through school and you know finish everything straight A's and all that and you you can't even get through one semester without having you know just crying and all this and that and whatnot mm -hmm. i don't understand well the thing is the difference between me and my sister is the fact that both her mom and my dad put her in counseling very, very early. My sister has been in counseling since a little girl. Me, I'm just not getting into counseling and how to or how to cope with my feelings. So I think there is a difference with just getting that type of help um, mm -hmm. that we need to, I guess, reinforce within the Black community. Um, mm. so, so let's get into your counseling experience. When did you start having counseling? What did it look uh, like? Who was counseling you? And yeah, just basically what a typical session would be. Let's let's go through the details because this concept of, to be honest, even for me, mm -hmm. I tried, um, count, I think it depends on where you get the counseling as well. That has a massive mm -hmm. impact. Definitely. And to be honest, at the, and I, I'd like to know about the financial side as well because to be fair, I'm still on my journey of trying to find uh, a good counsellor. At this point, I don't know. It's like, it seems quite expensive, like the different options I'm looking at. But at the same time, I haven't had a lot of time to really look into it because I'm just, again, so focused on my work, so focused on just getting on. And part of me thinks if I just carry on with my work, find constructive things to do, mm -hmm. then that in itself will be make. The therapy i need so i'm still trying to figure out how much therapy do i actually need and so when i talk about therapy on this podcast i just want to make it clear to people mm -hmm. i'm on my own journey and i'm here to learn more than anything so um if i'm talking about therapy don't see it as i'm talking from experience necessarily because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm i'm just learning i i i'm, I'm on my own journey <laughs> yeah so um yeah tell me about your journey with the counseling funding for it like all the details basically <laughs> oh, okay so my school funds the counseling um, okay oh well i pay for it through tuition and whatnot so literally i just have to go in and um, make an appointment and you know so when you say your school you mean your hbcu yeah, yeah my hbcu <laughs> so the hbcu they fund the count so your tuition fee part of that tuition fee is invested into the counseling mm -hmm perfect and, yeah so i don't have that's to worry about that's it. amazing so long as i'm staying in school mm. um 
So yeah, my first counselor um, was very opinionated. Um, and so after going through a pretty bad event, you know, I went there, um, school set it up and everything for me. Um, basically she was telling me, you know, that she was being, no, she was being brutally honest. And the thing is, you know, I, for a while I was in denial, you know, cause I said, no, this couldn't happen to me. This didn't happen to me. That's not how everything went down, but it's exactly how it went down. And so, yeah, she was definitely like that auntie that says things in a very like harsh way. Um, and so basically just pushing me when I'm not exactly ready to like do certain things or, um, I don't know. It's just her, she was very persistent. And so I kind of, I'm kind of glad that the pandemic happened and I had no choice but to switch counselor due to me being in a whole nother state. Mm. Um, I ended up getting a counselor who is definitely, you know, not so much opinionated, but more so she lets me talk and, um, mm. you know, just kind of guides the conversation in a way where um, I find my own solutions while talking because um, she knows that I'm kind of like a self-aware person. So if I know something is wrong, it's not so much, you know, denial or, um, you know, me just not understanding what's going on. I like, I understand what's going on. I'm just trying to figure out how can I get better more so. And so, yeah, she sees that. And so she helps me out with that. Um, so, I would suggest if you do get into counseling or therapy and whatnot, um, avoid those who are extremely opinionated because if anything, it's going to make you want to run away from the solution rather than actually face it. Um, so, yeah, because I know there was like a couple people complaining, you know, saying that this one particular counselor, because it's supposed to be anonymous or like, you know, you're not really supposed to know who is your counselor. People aren't supposed to know. Um, but the thing is, I could tell who the counselor they were talking about was because they just, it, you just didn't feel good leaving her office because she was so opinionated. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then also, like, if you can't really afford counseling, find that one particular friend that will just listen rather than just, just tell you what you should and should not do. Um mm -hmm. I realized that I was that friend who would tell you what you should and should not do. Um, but I realized after, you know, falling out with a particular friend, because she was definitely walking down the wrong path and me just telling her, don't do this. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to listen to me. If anything, she pushed me away. Mm -hmm. And so that was my lesson learned. And I just have to just provide counsel in a way to not really push people, but actually have them find their own solution and just really talk about what's really going on and then the truth will hit them in the face when they actually say it out for them say it out loud to themselves rather than mm. them. mm. so what key things have you learned from your therapy so far like um key things you've learned about yourself and ways mm -hmm. to deal with your mind and the link that your thoughts and your mind has to your physical health as well um, so just mm -hmm. kind of give us a summary of, if you can, <laughs> of the different things you've learned about yourself and mental health in general and yeah, yeah. through the counseling. So um, I need to learn how to be my own advocate. Um, I have been such an obedient child to the point where people can just walk all over me whenever they feel like, mm. Um, mm, especially when it comes to authority. Authority. Mm. Um, because there have been instances at school where the people who are the authority thought they could just, you know, walk all over me and it kind of hurts because at the same time, you don't want to tick them off because they basically, you know, hold all the opportunities. But at the same time, you can't just take that. So it's just a matter of learning that, um, as well as learning how to cope with stress and everything finding ways to, um, I guess, release all this tension and mm. whatnot. Um, and what, what practical examples do you have of that? Ways you've been, you've learned to kind of deal with stress 
as because um, I'm you know the thing about stress is it affects all of us in different ways so mm-hmm. especially as a student so yeah how how have you dealt with it practically yeah practically um, mm-hmm. um making well honestly animation i love it but at mm. a certain point it gets stressful and so yep. i have yep. to <laughs> Um, so my release, I guess my release or my way of getting that stress off of me is basically just making music. And mm. so I just play around with it. It's a good opportunity. I don't have to really think about it. I just have to think about what sounds good to me mm. and I'll just make it happen. And so, so that, you really stress through doing things you like, you're quite a proactive person, mm-hmm. you do something that. Yeah, I'm similar. I'm 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 sure you've noticed, you know, yeah. I like to stay active and I know I said earlier, you know, in a sense, even what I'm doing right now, the podcast in a sense has been therapeutic cuz sometimes it's hard for you to be introspective and see things within yourself unless someone else brings something up and like you're like, "Oh, wow. I I went through that as well." I've had a, quite a few of those moments through these mm-hmm. conversations. So, um, yeah, that's the wonderful thing about, especially the age we live in, we've got resources and um, things that we can use to just create a healthy release for, for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's great. Um, is there anything you want else you want to say in terms of how counselling has helped you and what you've learned? Um, counselling has definitely allowed me to talk about things that I would never really say you know out loud to anybody else because it is confidential um the only way they can release any of the information is if you know something bad happens to you or if they notice something like you know you might be um you know possibly suicidal you possibly possibly might be um you might hurt somebody or anything Thing involving like the courts or the law that's when you have to pull your records but other than that they're not allowed to say anything otherwise that is their job their license mm-hmm. everything is at risk so yeah i like that aspect you know? mm-hmm. yeah. and then also the fact that there are always there are always other ways if you can't go into the office physically they have alternatives where they have a 24-hour counseling um like <laughs> call line i guess what's it called mm, that's um good. you can talk to somebody on the phone and mm. um they also have a program called well track where you can actually just type what you're feeling on that day if you mm. want and they'll pay attention to that to see if there's any changes within your mood okay so we've talked about the advantages let's get into an honest one what's been the most difficult part of counseling for you what what was I guess the most challenging aspect of it opening up mm. that is the most difficult thing because honestly if you have that person who's not opinionated um you're basically just talking to yourself and so it's just mm. a matter of facing yourself and your reality and so yeah mm. that's the difficult part <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah coming to terms with what's going on with you mm. so during COVID, how's counseling looked like for you? And how has COVID impacted the counseling? Um, um, Zoom calls. So mm. <laughs> it's interesting. I have to make sure my door is closed, mm. you know, making sure nobody bothers me at that time. Yeah. Um, internet connections, right? <laughs> Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying this insightful episode so far. Uh, I just want to use this brief intermission to quickly share with you something that's really been helping me the past few months in terms of my physical health, which in turn has helped my mental health too. Because you see, it's very easy for us to talk about mental health, uh, forgetting that our physical health is connected with it, you know, because our bodies do need certain nutrients and um, certain things to help our brain deal with the stress that's running through our body and so 
um, you know, to manage our adrenaline levels, to manage our adaptogens. And so, and so the past few months, I've been using a variety of um, food supplement products to help me in different aspects of my health. For example, um, to help me with my stress levels and my concentration levels, uh, I've been taking these really great organic um, optimized nootropics um, shots, or which are abbreviated as on shots. Um, the little juice pouches um, that are have a rich flavor, a rich raspberry flavor, which you can mix with water or your own kind of um, drink mixture. And it's been helping me just about one cup a day has helped me get through my course workload as well as my podcasting as well as all my other content uh, including my mental route short film and so uh, if you're someone like me who's pretty hard working and easily gets quite stressed or worn out through work um, these are great um, caffeine natural caffeine um, shots that you can take without the usual crash that you get from coffees and energy monster drinks and all of that stuff so if you want to know more about that there is actually a link in the written description for this podcast episode uh, and you can book a quick consultation uh, call with me where we can discuss these products and where you can get them from uh, it is a particular brand which i'm keeping on the low key for now because it's one of those things where it's so good you just kind of want to keep it to yourself and only share it with people who you know are genuinely interested and so yeah just um uh, select a time slot in that um, link and we'll uh, consult you and there are other products as well including some really rare um wild alaskan uh fish oil um, pills which i've been using not your typical fish oil pills um obviously rich in omega-3 but for me personally they've really helped me wake up uh with a fresh mind um, with no baggy eyes, very clear white eyes, which is quite unusual for me. Um, I usually get red eyes and, you know, it takes me quite a while to um, get started and get energized in the morning. Um, but these pills have just sped up that process to help me start the day better, uh, which is also very important. The way we start our days has a huge impact on our mental and emotional outlook throughout the day. So um, if you also want to know about that, you can, again, book that slot in the link to meet me and talk about that. But regardless of what um, products and foods and drinks that you take, uh, just remember to think about the nutrients, do your research, see what nutrients are important for your body to help your uh, mental health and to help your physical health as well, to help your stress levels. And let's be practical in how we deal with our mental health too. So with all that said, let's hop back into the interview. And how does it feel? Because it's like, I'm pretty sure when you did it in person, you were in a safe environment. Would Was it some, was it on campus or was that? It was on campus. On campus, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you felt physical. safe. You felt safe in that physical space because it wasn't where your family was and everything. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about, and I'm, I'm yet to do more research into this, but the impact of COVID on just the home, like black people's homes and mm -hmm. the fact that we, we're spending more time with each other. Um, and how has that impacted you? Like with the, you've just said at home, you had to shut the door, you've had to shut the door and make sure, you know, you try and keep things as confidential as possible. How's that gone for you? And what are you learning from this experience, I guess? Well, luckily the house is big enough to actually do that. Honestly, I'm in the weird <laughs> corner of the house. <laughs> when we first moved into our house, um, my sister described where my room and the room that used to be my dad's room, but now he's in a different area. Um, oh, I didn't even talk about, I forgot the most important detail about my dad, but maybe we could talk about that the other day. Um, but yeah, it's like a weird like quarter or yeah, the best way to describe it, the quarters because it has its own little separate hallway area, bathroom, my bedroom, and now what's an office and the laundry room. So my mom's room is so far away from where I'm at. My little sister's room is all the way upstairs <laughs> and my dad is downstairs. So wow. we are far enough. <laughs> mm, interesting, interesting. Yeah. In that's convenient for you then, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, 
in a way, yeah, again, just give me a bit more on how COVID has impacted your counselling sessions and is it doing it on camera? Does it yeah. feel does it feel like much of a barrier or you've kind of gotten over it now? It still feels the same pretty much. It feels about the same. Because mm. um, I switched counselors in the middle of COVID. So, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely feel a little bit more comfortable. Like mm. I said, with my new counselor, um, yeah. she's more understanding. She does not judge. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. And for you, how important has it been i've heard a phrase called culturally culturally competent theory, therapy i don't know if that's a term you, you've heard of mm -hmm. so is that quite important at your hbcu what's the name sorry what's the name of your hbcu again um or florida agriculture and mechanical university but we're just going to go with famu yeah, <laughs> call it what we're but, just going to call it famu <laughs> okay cool yeah so how important is culturally competent therapy at your college and from your perspective how important is it how, how much has it helped you so um, let's first of all break down the term for those listening who might not be familiar with this so culturally competent ter therapy and I'll, I'll let you add in where you want to mm -hmm. my understanding is um therapy that pays attention to the culture of the person getting the therapy. So in mm -hmm. the context of black people, the therapy, the, the therapist is aware of the dialogue of the person. They mm -hmm. understand the language. Mm -hmm. um, and most likely they come from the same place. Right. So when we talk about um, certain things that happen within our families mm -hmm. do the therapists understand that on a cultural level on a community level have they ex yeah. actually experienced that yeah. um and so really what we're talking about is black therapists when you get to the heart of it all you know? of them black yeah mm -hmm. all of them. in fact my counselor um she went to an hbc so yeah not mm -hmm. me but a different one okay uh, yeah I so give me your experience on that how how has that helped you open up in a way that and and the the counselor who was too opinionated were they black as well or yeah oh, okay cool, cool the whole counseling team is black and w were they all females um no there are some males um, okay yeah so yeah let's let's dissect that like what's your experience been with a male counselor and a female counselor what was, what was the impact of those different um factors and yeah let's let's no. just break it down yeah, okay, so I did go see one male counselor one time. Um, he was, it was because like I was like just emotionally just all over the place that day. Um, he was very like, I don't know, it was kind of like, he was, when I was talking about it, I was kind of upset you know, with my family and all this and that and whatnot. And so he was talking to me like, you know, parents might do some things that, you know, it might not seem like you might not understand. And all. it was kind of like he was talking from like a father type perspective. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Was he around an age? I think age is another thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, yes, we talk about age, gender, ethnicity, those mm -hmm. three factors. How did they how have they influenced? your counseling so you've already started to talk about age so i'm assuming he was probably around the age group of your parents a little okay. bit younger but a little bit younger okay yeah cool. but it's still old enough to be a parent obviously the way he was talking oh, okay okay got it, got it. yeah um, and then, but, okay so we've got that and then what about the next counselor or counselors the opinionated one um she I know when it comes to counseling, when they hear other people's stories and whatnot, that can be pretty dramatic itself, from what I'm hearing, where they hear some pretty crazy stuff, and eventually they hear it so much that they actually start feeling the way some of these people feel. And so I think um, it's important to, and then that, that's when they start putting their opinions in on what they should, what they would have done if they were in this particular person's shoes and whatnot. 
And so I think it's also important that these counselors get some counseling as well <laughs> um, to kind of get that sorted out. Um, so yeah, she was, she was definitely, you know, I don't know how to describe because like I have to be very careful. I don't want to give away anybody's like identity and everything because you know it's still kind of like confidentiality and everything. But um yeah, I can definitely tell she has definitely dealt with people who have been in similar situations. And so she basically tried to impact what she would think she would do in that situation. Versus sorry, me. can you maybe speak up a little bit? I didn't Oh sorry, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I apologize. Um, it's okay. Yeah, it was just her putting her work, her opinion and putting what she would do in this situation into mm. the conversation, which is sometimes not the best thing to do. Okay. And then my current counselor, um, she's very sympathetic. Mm. Um, she definitely listens. She tries to, you know, not put her opinion in, like I said earlier, more so, you know, you're talking to yourself mm. um, rather than, um, you know, yeah. her doing it. So your current counsellor, like, um, is she younger than the other counsellors? Like what, you know, the different aspects to her identity, does it really have that much of an impact on how good a counselor she is or is it is it more like yeah just kind of your perspective so far on the experience and the different aspects of the counselor's identity and how yeah. that impacts and when i say different factors i mean you know like the age and the gender and different things with that with your current counselor do you have a lot of things in common in in that regard or there's some differences and those differences don't really matter because there's more to being a good counselor than or a relatable counselor than just being the same age for example or you mm -hmm. know so yeah what's your perspective on that i think to a certain degree we might approach things in a similar way or we might think in a certain way so i think that's probably why i relate to her more um because I am like a very gentle person, she's like very gentle in how she approaches the mm. situation and talks about it. So I think that's why. So maybe find a counselor who might think like you, but knows much more about how to handle these type of situations. So yeah, just that, just having that wisdom and talking to people through that type of stuff. That's definitely a good way to find a good counselor. Mm. Mm. I've seen we've run out of time already. It's nearly an hour and a half. So, and we didn't get, we'll definitely talk about your faith um, and your particular kind of um, expression of Islam. We'll get into that another day. Um, mm. In fact, I'm not sure if you're aware, I had another podcast talk called Hashtag Faith Talk that mm. I did before Mental Roots. Um, it's been a while since I did that. I think it was last summer just before starting Mental Roots that I stopped because Mental Roots just came to me and I just had to do it. Um, but when mm -hmm. I do resume fa Faith Talk, I think we'll have a really good conversation about, you know, what you believe as a Muslim because that intrigues me. I'm I'm very intrigued by faith and spirituality. Um, and I myself, I, uh, I'm, I'm a strong Christian. and um, But I do like to have challenging conversations and hear perspectives yeah, yeah. that are different to mine so we'll definitely do that conversation uh, at some point in the future but for now uh, we've had a great conversation about identity ethnicity and your therapy what point i guess out of everything we've discussed today what gem do you want to leave with the listeners today hmm, that is a really good question um If you need help, please go seek help. There are lots and lots of resources. Mm. If you cannot find it, I would just say talk to people who may know of some other resources or just talk to somebody who knows a lot more 
than you who mm. is who will i guess put your best interest at heart you know i guess put your interests you know they know oh man <laughs> i'm messing up i would say this there are a lot of older people out there and i take the time to really listen to these older people um because they been through they may have gone through some similar things and so they might know how to approach it or how to not approach some of these challenges you're going to see in life mm -hmm. so it is always good to talk to the older folks i'll say that how about that listen to the old folks okay, okay. um <laughs> and then sometimes don't listen to them because there is an older way of thinking that does need to change mm -hmm. um especially within the black community um, if you feel as though what they're saying is not right or is outdated, I would definitely say have a conversation with them, bring up your points, they'll bring up their points and come to the middle ground where you both feel comfortable. That's something to keep in mind because Wonderful. there's a lot that younger people need to learn from older folks and older folks need to definitely learn from younger people because we are going to notice the flaws of an older system. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it's unity within our community um, across um, generations and also mm. across genders as well and sexes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's, we need to work on that. Yeah. Oh, and like I said, with older people do that with the genders, sexes, whatever you got to go on, you know, got going on talk to each other that's the mm. thing people don't talk to each other anymore it's mm. just like we talk oh, at you. each other but yes not to each other yeah yeah we don't listen to each other's points and so when we do bring up a valid point it's just like you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong mm. or you're hurting me or you're yeah. a bigot all this other stuff and i'm just mm. like no you really do have to sit down and listen because sometimes there are valid points and i'm not the type of person to side with one particular side it's usually i'm listening to both sides especially if they have valid points that might be hindering on the other side or hurting the other side in some form or fashion you should really take the time to listen because if they had no problem with you they wouldn't even say anything to you you know Mm -hmm. or feel some type of way so something is obviously wrong mm. so, so learn to listen basically learn to yes. listen listen <laughs> learn to listen to other people but also learn to listen to yourself exactly learn, yeah yeah because there are things you can take away from other people but there are things that you know you have to make your own decisions and that's how you grow yeah yeah and be wonderful honest. taja thank you thank you for your time that was awesome Thank you. <laughs>
um, this sort of kind of education on mental health and uh, black history, a better awareness of black history. It's it's important to implement that in the current schooling system and uh, you know try and create that integration. But at the same time, part of me also thinks there's value in starting from the ground up. It's great to see more black entrepreneurs and business owners and um, just black people who are entrepreneurially minded and community minded as well to build from the ground up our own system our own education system our own um, programs to help um, all sorts of children you know all varieties of children um, but especially those considered minority minor, minority ethnic to get that education on not only mental health awareness um, not only black history awareness but financial literacy and all sorts of invaluable life skills that are still left out of curriculums in general in the UK so just this remodeling of how we educate the next generation that is a huge part in making sure the next generation of our multicultural society does not grapple with the same difficulties that our generation and the generations before us have had in terms of being armed with the knowledge and the language to articulate and deal with our mental health struggles especially mental health struggles that are a result of ethnic oppression and race institutional racism so with all that being said um, clearly me and Taja are on the same page and if you agree with Taja and you like what you're hearing from her you might be excited to you know stay up to date with her in terms of her progress in creating Grace Academy uh, Grace Academy is her own kind of animated series that she's working on um, to highlight especially from a black female perspective um, just various issues with um, that women face and yeah just female empowerment but particularly from a black perspective so go check her out on social media to stay up to date with not just that but just her animation journey in general uh, I think she's gonna create some great stuff already considering that she's taught herself she, she, she's already done quite a lot she's done quite well so keep your eyes on her and where her work takes her because I see her really going places to be honest so she's on Instagram at um, it's about truth I double S A B O U T T R U T H that's where she's she's at on Instagram follow her send her a message of encouragement and you know do the same with me as well my Instagram is at Nathan Day at N A T H underscore A double D A I message me let me know how this podcast has impacted you or inspired you i want to keep in contact with you guys and let me know what kind of topics or content you want me to cover next um, in regards to the black community and or mental health so uh, our next guest um, is very special she's also a female and she's also the founder of an amazing organization called inside out uk um and she's got an amazing story that I can't wait to share with you in terms of how she came to be more aware of mental health and what it's been like for her um, to create, you know, um, content like I am regarding mental health and kind of the challenges of that, but also the joys and where she wants to take things. And we talk about some other really cool topics as well. We also kind of touch on... Um, you know the black female experience and how she perceives the struggle of black men in regards to mental health which she is actually very passionate about which is amazing so that's going to be great part one of that conversation comes out next week you do not want to miss it okay so say yeah stay <laughs> stay subscribed on all platforms that you're listening whether it's spotify apple music not apple music sorry apple podcasts google podcasts stitcher i'm everywhere bro so yeah <laughs> stay subscribed on those platforms so you get the new episodes as soon as they come out and with all that said i look forward to you guys tuning in next week we rolling peace